Hi everyone, today we're gonna watch and learn about the tattoo tribe in Nagaland. So stay till the end and know the fact why Konyak tribe tattoo their face and other body parts. So without further ado let's begin. The tattooed headhunters tribe of Nagaland, also known as the last existing headhunter in India. When I first heard about the tattooed headhunters of Nagaland, I was intrigued. There is a group of people who have tattoos on their faces and different parts of their bodies. They also belong to the fierce warrior clan who used to sever the heads of their enemies. They are the members of the Konyak tribe of Nagaland, an ethnic group who are known for their fearsome headhunting practices and elaborate facial tattoos. And today, only a few of the fearless, as well as, feared headhunters remain. The Konyak tribe is one of the 17 tribes residing in Nagaland in northeast India, bordered by Myanmar to the east and Assam to the west. One of the smallest states in India, Nagaland is a land blessed with nature's beauty. It is also one of the most culturally vibrant states in India, known mostly in the tourism circuit for Hornbill Festival. The Konyak tribes find their home in Mon district lying on the eastern part of Nagaland. If you want to know more about the Konyak tribe or the famed headhunters of Nagaland, you are in the right place. A brief history of the Konyak tribe. What today is known as the Konyak tribe of Nagaland was once a group of separate ethnic entities. Before the advent of the British, these separate groups identified themselves based on their geographical locations, tattoo patterns and language. The British used the term Konyak to group all of them under a single name. Interestingly, the Konyak tribe does not have any written script. All their history, traditions, culture and knowledge have been transmitted from generation to generation orally through folklore, folk songs, poems and general sayings about the ways of life. The Konyak tribe has songs for every mundane day-to-day -day task. Daily chores like farming or rice pounding have songs dedicated to it. There are oral lores about daily life, love, life and death, headhunting and tattooing. The Konyak tribe belongs to the Mongoloid race. It is believed that the Konyak tribe had migrated to the present-day Mon district of Nagaland from the east after crossing the Putkai Hills. Mon, the land of Angs. Mon district is also known as the, the land of Angs. The Ang is basically the monarchical head of the village. He is like the king of the village and his tribe. Every village in the area has an Ang. However, nine villages are considered to be the most powerful and their Angs are considered to be most powerful of all the Angs. The lineage of these nine Angs, also known as Ang Tok is believed to belong to the highest noble family. These nine Konyak villages are Kai, Mon, Longwa, Xiangha Chingayu, Shangnu, Longzang, Tang, Yansha and Zongkam. In these villages, transfer of power is hereditary. Only the son of the Ang can be the next Ang. I also heard another interesting bit of information. The Ang Tok of a village must marry an Angya, or the daughter of another Ang Tok from a different village. This marriage is generally an alliance formed between two powerful villages. Only the children born by this royal lady can be the heir of the Ang Tok. The eldest son usually gets to be the next Ang or king. The Ang Tok can also opt to take other lovers and concubines at the same time. But the children born by them do not get any right in the property. This type of social system where power is hereditary is prevalent only in the northern part of Mon district, also known as the Lower Konyak area. In the southern part of Mon, also known as the Upper Konyak area, power is not hereditary. In those areas, the system is autocratic and power has to be earned through status, prestige, wealth and valor. The Headhunters of Nagaland Headhunting was once the heart of Naga society. Almost all the tribes in Nagaland used to practice headhunting. But it is the Konyak tribe that holds a special place in the stories and lores surrounding them. It is probably because of the reason that the Konyak tribe was the last ones to give up the practice of headhunting. The Konyak Naga tribe are a fierce warrior tribe, known for their ferocity and warring practices with neighboring villages. They are known for their headhunting prowess, where they used to sever the heads of their enemies and bring back the victim's head to the village as a trophy. These heads would then be adorned on the walls and doorways of the warriors' homes. Usually, animal skulls were placed at the house of the individuals who hunted them. Human enemy skulls were brought and decorated at the house of the Ang and at the Morungs. What are Morungs? Morungs are the dormitories where the male members of the Konyak spent their time before getting married. Each village had a number of Morungs depending on their population. Young boys would enter the Morungs at a young age and stay there. They learned hunting, farming and other ways of life in the Morungs from their elders. The young boys would get their first tattoos done in the Morungs. They would also bring their first victim's head in the Morung. Only after they got married, would they move into their houses. 
Cognac Tribe and Tattoos. While headhunting was practiced among almost all the tribes of Nagaland, it is the tattoos that make the Cognac Tribe unique. And it is also these tattoos that interested me the most to visit the land of the Cognac Naga Tribe. To the outside world, the Cognac Tribe is often known as the Face Tattoo Tribe of Nagaland. The tattoos adorning the bodies of the Cognacs were like an identification mark on their bodies. These tattoos separated a child from an adult, a warrior from a common man. Even women had tattoos. The tattoos of Cognac women mainly identified an aristocratic woman from the rest or an unmarried woman from a married one. Mainly these tattoos depicted the maturity of a person, their coming of age and having passed from one stage of life to another. There was a common belief that those with tattoos would ensure a safe passage to the afterlife. Thus, there were almost no cognacs without tattoos. However, it is the facial tattoos that intrigued me the most. And perhaps these facial tattoos are the most fascinating part of the Cognac Naga tribe. Only a warrior who was able to bring a severed head to the village got the entitlement to get a facial tattoo. Tattoos on their faces marked that they were the finest warriors of the land. Thus headhunting and the ritual of tattooing was inexorably linked. Reasons for getting tattoo. There were several reasons for getting a tattoo on the bodies. The significance of the tattoos were based on their designs and patterns as well as the place where they were made. For example, facial tattoos were done only on the headhunters or the warriors. Those who did not cut a head would never get a facial tattoo. Tattoos on the chest depicted the different stages of life. For women, tattoos marked their physical journey. A young cognac girl would get a tattoo done on the calves of their legs. When a young woman was betrothed to be married, she would get a tattoo on their knees. Only a female of noble origin would get a tattoo on their arms or neck. The tattoo artists, who made the tattoos. It is interesting to note that the tattoos were done only by the women belonging to the noble families of the Ang's, chiefs. Only the Angias, or queens, would make the tattoos on the bodies of the cognac men. The art of tattoo making was passed on from the mother to the daughter. When they married to other villages, they took the designs and expertise with them. Usually, the ladies would first make tattoos on other girls. It was like practice before they would draw tattoos on the men. There were also male tattoo artists who specialized in some rare forms of tattoos, like the tattoos of the tiger spirit. These tattoos were usually drawn on the back of the most powerful angs. That's it for today. If you enjoyed watching this video the please hit the subscribe button and comment down which tribe you belong. Thank you see you all in the next video.